Hi, I'm Kenneth Wajda. I'm a professional photographer here in Colorado. Welcome to another one of my photography talks. Today I want to talk about the price that we pay for digital convenience. And I wrote an essay, and I'll link to that essay in the comments below, but it touches on we have gone to ones and zeros for our music, for our letters, and for our photography. And does the cost of not having any handwritten letters or even sometimes greeting cards just having emails does the cost of not having any physical records but just having mp3s with their compressed sound which we've almost come to accept it doesn't have as good of sound as a, a full cd or a record but it's good enough because it's convenient so what is the price of convenience and certainly in photography I think that it's true that we don't print. Most people are shooting thousands of photos, they don't even want to edit them and they drop them on a hard drive or they'll leave them on their phone until they lose it and they lose photos and it's a known thing that people lose photos because they lose phones. It's not a you know blanket statement that's wrong to say oh people lose phones. People do lose phones and those phones have pictures in them and they don't exist if they're not in some other form that is physical. You could say they're on a cloud or they're on Facebook but they still don't exist. To me the only thing that exists is something that you can hold and something that you can pack up and you can move with and take with and give to your future generation because we are working as the historians of the future, right? Everything we do is so that the people of tomorrow can say, hey, that's what grandma and grandpa looked at their, like at their wedding. But if there's no prints of that, it's just to me, it's one of those fascinating situations where convenience has become our go-to. And we want cheap everything. And we don't want to pay for quality. And we don't even need quality. We're willing to take music that's compressed. We're willing to take an email from grandma. Really grandma you're sending me an email? But to me photography is also in that same boat. We have to look at what are we creating and are we printing. I photographed a couple of friends at a happy hour a few weeks ago and this one woman her her uh, brother was in visiting so I photographed her and I hand printed that and I'll see them tomorrow at happy hour and I'll give that to them in a frame. And that's one of those things that is physical. That will live on somebody's shelf much longer than a Facebook post that's already getting buried and lost and forgotten. Because digital has very little longevity. The time frame of a photo I think is maybe a half a second or a second that people actually look at your photograph. I was talking with Jay Blakesburg, who's the photographer I featured in one of these talks, of, who's a, a concert photographer. And he had a good point. He said, basically, 98% of all photographs being made are garbage. And then 1.5% are mediocre. And that's what most people think are good. They even think the garbage ones are good, but they think the mediocre ones are good. And then there's one half a percent of the pros who actually can photograph consistently they can show up and they can get the shot and he was referencing himself certainly and saying but they don't want to pay my five thousand dollars when they can pay that guy five hundred dollars and mediocre is good enough and that's the price of convenience is everything kind of gets lowered in what is our quality standard all right that's today's photography talk take a look at the essay i'll put it in the links below and Thanks so much for watching. If you're enjoying these, hit the subscribe button and share the link with your friends if you have any photographer friends. All right, thanks so much.